What's up guys, Shane here from House of Cards TCG and we have a live duel review for you. It is Phantom Knight's Brave Adventure PK, however you want to say it, versus Shadal Invoked Dogmatica. Going to be a good one, part of our local review uh, series here and we're real excited to bring it to you. And make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate your support. Almost at 2,000 subscribers and we couldn't be more happy. So uh, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe button, and ding the notification bell as well to uh, be notified every time we put out a new video. All right, let's jump right in. House of Cards. TCG. Okay, so just rolling the die, see who wins. <laughs> Looks like the invoke player won based on his hand motions. I um, think that's right. Couldn't really read the, the die from this angle, but um, I guess we'll see. Each player draws five, obviously. Um, yeah, looks like a celestial in hand for myself. Okay, maybe he made me go first. Um, activate right, special summon the token. Um, and then set Faithful Adventure from the deck. Right is such a broken card. Okay, that resolves. Um, from there, again, I'm playing Phantom Knights here. Um, let's see, what's what's the next play? It looks like an Ash Blossom in hand. Uh, Celestial looks like a Boots. I'm saying Boots, could be Cloak. Okay, going to activate right. Um, search out the Griffin Rider. Yep, search out Griffin Rider. And then have to send one card from my hand to the graveyard. Thinking on that. Going to send the cloak. Going to activate Griffin Rider to summon. Now I am Nibiru proof. And then on the summon, trigger Faithful Adventure to search, search Draco back. Just kind of give me a, a free card to discard. Um, didn't really do anything going first. Almost would rather not have it in the deck going first, but it does give you an extra card in hand. Um, going to activate Cloak, banish to search a The Phantom Knights card. And <laughs> I guess I'm reading that to make sure. Probably going to add Boots here. I think. Kind of not a great hand. Um, oh, gonna add Torn Scales. Okay. So let's see what I'm thinking with that. Normal summon the Torn Scales. Can't trigger the effect because of Faithful. Okay, I'm gonna go into a Link Spider. And then gonna link those two off into an anaconda. He's got the imperm, you can see. Um, ready for it. I'm gonna activate it. Uh, gonna imperm it. Still have to send the fusion destiny and pay 2000 for cost. Um, unfortunately, that got negated, so now I'm left with. Looks like just the ash blossom in hand versus. Um, Versus Invoked, which is Ash is actually really good, but this really bricky hand, not not a hand you want to open as a PK player. Um, so he's going to draw for turn. You can see he has the Meltdown. Um, we're going to let that resolve. You, you don't Ash the Meltdown. You get hit by Gamma or just a, a hard up in, Invoker, which is a three of, so you don't want to Ash that. Um, he's going to normal the Invoker. I'm going to immediately get hit with an Ash Blossom. And that's the right play there. Um, you got to stop him to get into that engine. So he's going to go into Secure Gardener. Um, can't tell exactly what's in his hand. Looks like another Meltdown. Um, but he has no plays. He's going to attack into the Anaconda. I take 500. Taking 2,500. We'll do a better job at getting the, um, the life point counter up. So draw, stand by main. Um, let's see what the best play is here. Looks like I opened to E-Telly. So that's going to be, that's going to be good. Uh, so trigger Faithful to search. 
going to search the uh, water enchantress and then discard the oh yeah can't equip it from there that I don't have a brave token but still just just a free discard it's not really doing anything uh, so normal the water enchantress activate Etelli. so enchantress is a level three going into two level threes to make your chair beanie classic phantom knights play um, and I already have the torn scales in the graveyard so if I can get another phantom knight in there it's full combo Plus, from there, you can activate the Water Enchantress. So this is just a whole lot. If he doesn't have any hand traps here, any way to stop me, this is going to be this is going to be game. So thinking on next, going to activate Cherubini. Send for cost. Um, yeah, probably a cloak or a boots. Cloak. Yeah. Banish Water Enchantress. Um, search right. Search the right, activate the right, bring out the token. Now I have an Omni Negate. Um, and then we will do the cloak. Banish the cloak. Going to probably search boots. Yeah, and then on res, we're going to trigger the Torn Scales to summon itself. And putting it in that Cherubini zone, which is smart. Okay, so next we are going to special out the boots. Um, probably make a rusty here. Oh no, yeah, yeah, you can make a levier or break sword. There's a lot of different, a lot of different play, play lines here. I mean, a levier is a good extender. Um, like I said, this is this is just game. This is a lot of advantage here. Um, so probably going to go into rusty. Well, those two can't make rusty. Oh, going to the Dark Charmer. Okay, yep. Then going to special summon out his Alistair the Invoker. And yeah, this is this is just game. Yep, special out the Alistair the Invoker to a zone that the Dark Charmer points to. Um, from there, yeah, this is a lot of damage on board. Probably going to go into a Unicorn. Yep, going to go into a Unicorn. Gonna spin the secure garden back, and yeah, this is just a lot of damage on board. This is game. Still have the Omni Negate as well. Yeah, so that is 2000, 2053. So 93, that's game. Going on to game two. Let's see. I guess I'm thinking about what I'm gonna side deck here, but yeah, it looks like he opened the. He had multiple meltdowns, so it's, I would have been punished if I would have ashed that. Um, and it looks like he, he opened an invoker as well. Okay, going into siding. Um, the cool thing about this Phantom Knight deck is it's really easy to... There's a lot of cards you can side out to add in a lot of hand traps. So your, your side deck can just consist of a lot of hand traps. You have your um, Gamma Package four cards, so three Gamma, one Driver, and then you have the uh, three Lancia, and then you can also, a lot of people play Nib. I like Nib a lot. People don't expect it. Um, obviously, you're not going to side Nib against this Invoke deck, but something like a Lancia and a Droll is going to be really impactful. Um, so what I do is, if I'm going second, I'm going to side out some of the traps. You really don't want to be opening trap cards going second. Um, you know, opening a Shade Brigandine and opening a, um, you know, some of your, your wings or your Fog Blade. You just don't want to see those in your opening hand, so you side some of those out. It is, you know, you are going to need it to resolve Rusty, so, you know, sometimes I just keep in one, um, one Fog Blade or sometimes one Fog Blade, one Shade. Just, just kind of depends, but also it's, you can side out your E-Tele package. Um, just for more hand traps because you know having extra extenders is cool but you just really need those hand traps this format so it looks like that's what I'm just signing in is a lot of hand traps here um, and we are kind of debating he made us go first which is interesting strategy versus you know phantom knights that has scythe luckily I bricked so I wouldn't able to bring out scythe but 
it's kind of it's very risky to make this deck go first when they have access to, to artifact scythe um, so I was kind of debating on you know whether he's gonna make me go first or not and um, I think he does make me go first so I guess we're gonna see how that plays out um, no just doing a little power shuffle here for some reason I just do five it's just a, my favorite number so I just do five and I'll give it a you know a little little shuffle as well and yeah let's see is it gonna make me go first or second I think if I was the invoked player I would want to go first because invoked you know they have some good plays going second at like Purga Trio but uh, it's, and they do play a lot of hand traps but in this meta you just almost have to go first unless you're playing a dedicated go second deck um, so let's see looks like I'm looking at my hand like I'm going second yeah so he's going to start off that's a, that's a good call he's going to have the net of your servant I'm going to ash blossom it and then he's going to hit it with a cross out designator and I banished it there but I shouldn't have I was thinking of called by the grave It'll, I'll realize that but um, yeah cross out is a card I was not expecting but it did come in clutch there for him Yeah, mine doesn't get banished. He banishes his. Um, so that was all unfortunate. I, if I would have asked the, the near servant, I would have been in a really good spot. Um, and then he is going to send the app cologne, um, add the Ecclesia. He misses the app cologne effect here. And that's big. Um, he's going to normal summon out the Ecclesia, add Maximus. And... Um, he's going to special the Maximus. Um, I remind him here that you have to banish for cost to summon the Maximus. And I think at that point he realizes that he um, missed that effect, which is big. Um, resolving App Clone is extremely important. Uh, it's, you know, it's easy to miss during locals, but that is really going to come back to bite him. That's, that's, a, that's just a huge disadvantage at this point. Um, so thinking on what to send, there's nothing really good in the Phantom Knights deck that, you know, I can't plus off sending anything. So I was just going to send Dagda, doesn't do anything, go in second. Um, and here he realizes that he's just made a big misplay and he's going to scoop it up. So that was a 2-0. We're going to play again. Um, because this is locals, we really want everyone to have a good time and kind of figure out, yeah, my hand was not the... It was, you know, it was okay. wasn't the greatest. Um, we want everyone to have a good time, so we, you know, we run it back, and you know, no, no siding or anything. I'm just going to give them the opportunity to, you know, go back, and it's all about learning and, and growing in Yu-Gi-Oh, and um, you know, just getting better. That's what these locals testing matches are for, anyway. So he's going to go ahead and start over, um, and we will, you know. It's just, that's a good reminder not to miss the App Cologne effect, because that one is super important. And I think something else was going on, like, um, in, you know, in the shop that the timer wasn't set. There was some sort of distraction. So, uh, it happens. It happens to all of us. But, um, yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and run it back. Um, shuffling probably too many times, but get paranoid about that kind of thing. So, we're going to go ahead and let him go first again. Like I said, I'm not, uh, you know, we're not starting over. It's just... Um, that's what locals is about. So, I'm gonna draw five and see if I can open up a little bit better. Looks like I have a droplet, so that's always a good sign. Going second, he's gonna normal Alistair. Um, I don't think I have any responses. Looks like foolish torn scales droplet. Uh, it looks like a really broken hand. So he's gonna resolve the invocation. Um, bring out the macabre. Um, should use invocation effect. Yeah, add it back to hand. Yep, proper play. Looks like he has a lot of monsters in hand, so unfortunate. Um, so it looks like yeah, pass to me. Uh, opened up a trap card again. <laughs> looks like is that a wings and uh, fog blade in hand? So again, I I really don't want to open those. So my siding patterns have to be a little bit better. You want to side out some of these traps. I mean you. 
The Phantom Knight engine is good on its own, but opening purple cards going second is just never a good look. Uh, unless you have something like Strike Torrential. Um, but with this deck, you don't want that. So I start off with Foolish Burial. Gonna probably dump the Water Enchantress here. Um, oh, no. Dropping the Cloak. Um, water Enchantress would have been good. I think I'm thinking about how to best utilize this Droplet. So I could have activated it there and sent the Foolish, but then he would just be able to, to activate Macabre to negate. So um, kind of thinking on that, how I want to do it. I think I just go ahead and, and just shotgun it. Yeah, Droplet sending the Water Enchantress. So I opened the Water Enchantress, didn't need to Foolish it. Um, yeah, so he tried to negate, and I reminded him that uh, Droplet prevents responses from, with monster effects. Gonna do Water Enchantress. Um, this hand is just broken. Water Enchantress is gonna add the right. And, yep. Yeah. I guess we're just talking a little bit here. Um, but yeah, some of my cards were, were uh... why did I not add the right, or did I? I guess I was thinking if he had a response. I'm not sure what is happening here. Did I just completely forget to add the right? Oh no, he ghost belled it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I missed that, but yeah, you can bell that. So he bells the he bells the um, water enchantress. So I'm gonna normal summon the torn scales, uh, pitching a gloves, activate effect, pitch gloves. Uh, it looks like I sent the wings from hand as cost. I just have a lot of phantom light engine here against. No interruption, so this is just going to be a uh, you know full combo aside from the um, aside from the brave stuff. So going to go into going to add the boots, summon the boots, and then turn those two into probably what's going to be a chair beanie. Yeah, chair beanie. Um, yeah, not much else to say. Chair beanie effects and for cost. Going to. And I think I've accessed almost all the names, so I'm probably just going to send, like, Greaves, um, just to have another <laughs> name in the graveyard, um, maybe to someone off the wings, but I just have access to everything now, so there's really just nothing that's going to be super, super, you know, high priority here, so it's cut off the screen, but I think I sent the Greaves. And then, I think I used the... Cloak was already banished. Wings, summon the Greaves. Yep. Wings, summon Greaves. And then trigger Twin Scales. And there's just so many different lines here. Um, just have a lot of extenders. I'm looking at his graveyard to see if he has a dark so I can go with his Charmer and snatch it again. Um, but I think I turned those into Breaksword. Yeah, Breaksword's a good player. Um, gonna Breaksword pop. Uh, destroy effect, bring back Locked in the Darks at this point. I'm going to bring back those two. Um, Torn Scales and Greaves. I still have a Boots in the graveyard I have in Trigger. I'm just thinking on what's the, what's the best way here. I think I go under Rusty. Which may or may not be. Let me know down below what you think would be the proper line here. Yeah, go under Rusty. Um... I just did that because Fogblade is just so powerful against this engine. A Fogblade on an Alistair is just ugh, punishing. Uh, I just didn't need a lot of... I didn't need the dump, though. So there probably was better, you know, link plays I could have made with going into an access code talker. Um, and then... Looks like... I'm thinking on gloves. Yeah, so I sided out, I believe, my other um, boots. I mean, not boots, fog blade. So I can't even uh, dump it as an extender. So that was definitely a misplay. There was totally more optimal lines here. Uh, I think I'm gonna, you know, embarrassingly enough, uh, this is gonna be close to the end board here. Um, and, oh, okay. So banish boots, add shade. And then I think I realize here, like this is this is not a very optimal play. I'm lucky I had the fog blade because this is just this should have been game with all this engine. Um, 
And like I said, this is the point of, you know, obviously locals testing, but um, not the most optimal play. There, there had to be a way to get game there. Let me know down below what would be the, the proper line. It's, it's always interesting to look back on these and, you know, try to write down and just really go through in your head what the proper line is. Uh, Phantom Knights has a lot of different play lines, so it's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm like looking through, like, what can I do? What can I do here? There's got to be something. Um, but swing and pass, he's going to normal Alistair. It's going to be met with the fog blade. Um, and I think that's just, is that a droplet in his hand? May have been able to dodge it um, if it is. But I think he's thinking on what to uh, what to do here. There's just not a lot of plays once that was met with the fog blade. Um, he could have chained droplets, sending it as cost. If that is a droplet in his hand, I can't tell. But he could send it as cost to negate either the, um, you know, obviously the Doran scales or the rusty. Um, so it looks like he just passed me, and I think I drew right. Um, and activated right, got the token, set faithful. And this is just going to be too much to overcome. Searching for the um, cloak into boots, special boots. Um, on that, going to add the Draco back. And then using the second effect to get the Griffin Rider. And this is just too much. This is just a lot of damage, and I'm going to be able to bounce. So equip, summon, yeah, you want to summon that there just as soon as possible. Uh, get an Omni Negate on board. And then I'm going to Xyz. This is just game. This is too much damage. I've already hit him for uh, 21 and 6, I think, so 27. Yeah, this is just more than enough. It's just a lot of damage. The PK deck is just really good. It has just such good recursion. If you can't kill them, they just have their their graveyard is just loaded up. Um, Brave Engine is super recursive. It's just it's really good. Um, overall, one of the best decks in the format. Uh, it does brick a lot. There's just a lot of bricks in the deck, but I, I I like it a lot. When it pops off, it really pops off. It can just really punish you. I can set up a double scythe lock. Just resolving one scythe is just game against almost every deck. Um, unless you're playing like Flunderies, Eldritch, some sort of trap deck. Um, but the engine is just so good. Um, again, a little disappointed with that Rusty plus Torn Scales pass. That is terrible. Um, so I'm going to have to look over that and see exactly what I could have done. Uh, let me Again, let me know in the comments down below what's the best play line there. Um, it didn't help that I was siding out my fog blades, but I'm sure there was just better lines. So I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate your support. And uh, be on the lookout for the next video. Shane from House of Cards, TCG, signing out. House of Cards, TCG.